So first of all, Jesse, thank you so much for taking the time to hop on the podcast. We've been kind of in connection for a few years um, ever since you launched the Breath Bell. Uh, but it's you never really sit down and have you never really sit down and have an hour long conversation like that. So I'm looking yeah. forward to catching up. So just to start off for anyone who uh, listen for anyone listening, uh, can you just give a quick overview of who you are? Sure. So my name is Jesse Oliver from Delaware. I'm uh, 42 at this point. So I uh, came from a pretty competitive athletic family. My dad played baseball at LSU a while back, and um, I was six or seven, and five, five of the seven kids played division one sports. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So, well, uh, yeah, go ahead. so the last three boys, my older brother, he's three years older than me. Uh, you know, we all played real positions in high school. On the football field, you know, we're all multi, multi sport athletes. Um, but we ended up, my brother kicked at West Virginia. I was a freshman, so I was like, oh shit, I can do this too. Um, yeah. I played at Miami, and then my little brother got a kicking scholarship to Boston College. So we actually, me and my older brother played versus each other, but uh, my little brother is just a year, uh, year older, so we didn't get a chance to play. Cool. In college. So after that, I got picked up uh, by the NFL. Um, I wasn't drafted, so uh, I was very fortunate. Um, you know, NFL is a weird world, especially for kickers. It's a very small world. There's only 64 starting in, uh, in the NFL. So during that time, I was already coaching, and during NFL and, and out of it, I've, I've coached for 15 years, mostly kicking and punting athletes, but I've coached thousands of high school, college, pro guys. You know, there's probably four or five um, that came out of my camp that are literally starting in the NFL today. Did way better than I did. <laughs> um, and, uh, and uh, yeah, and so I've always coached on, on top of my side job, you know, before Breath Belt took over. Yeah, the, the, the backstory of the pain that kind of led to Breath Belt, I'm sure we'll get into it, is, um, you know, I, I tore my quad, my pectineus, a bunch of kicking injuries, and um, I just lived in a, a decade of chronic back pain, insomnia, and just life sucked for a long time, and um, just went down the rabbit hole because I, I refused to get surgery. Um, the best, you know, uh, options by the NFL doctors were it was always surgery. Hip, you know, they said I need a hip replacement. I would see uh, at like 26, 27. Uh, I would see multiple doctors, not not tell them what I saw before, and pe people basically wanted to fuse me. If I listened to everybody, I would have got fused my thoracic down to my tailbone pretty much and it's I'm like there's got to be a better way which which led to that yeah most most people just kind of listen to the doctors and get the surgery so i'm curious like why didn't you just go to why didn't you just take their advice why did you even second guess well i've, I've always been someone that was like again like i, I was trying to be a kicker and put on the nfl i had supportive parents my, my dad would you know, help me get to, to, to the people I needed to see. And so I was always looking either for the edge or just the extra information, but there was just no extra information. Fortunately, along that time in my, um, you know, even in high school, working with chiropractors and physical therapists and all that stuff, just learning little bits. And I just knew that there's, you know, everybody wants to go all natural alternative, um, but the information just wasn't there and it is today. Fortunately, <laughs> so yeah, know, just going through the years, right. you know, I had some tools, but when, I, when you're in chronic pain, you know, I've heard some of other, on, a bunch of other great speakers you've had on this podcast, like Chris Duff, and they were one of my first partners in the press belt. You know, Chris went down the rabbit hole, and he's like, there's yeah. got to be a better way, uh, not just surgery, but, you know, uh, dynamic, you know, not dynamic, but prehab. So doing, you know, rehab before, on the way out, there's got to be a better way. Yeah. Well, yeah, surely we'll, we're going to go down that rabbit hole here in a minute, but I'd love to hear, can you tell me about your time at Miami? Was that when they won the national championship? So I actually left right, uh, right before. So I transferred, I was there in 99 and then I transferred to a, a small school. It's it pretty crazy. It went from Delaware to South Beach and Party Town. And, um, you know, we were number one for half of uh, 2001. I think we were 11 that year, but I transferred to, cause I, cause I kicked punted and kicked, uh, kicked off at Murray state. So I went from Miami to a dry County. <laughs> they, didn't have, they didn't have, uh, liquor until the third year. 
go to Applebee's last call is at 845. So that was like a weird <laughs> thing. But what a lot of, not that people care, but, uh, you know, you're only supposed to get four years in college. And, and uh, even with the redshirt year, which I technically played like three or four games my, my true freshman year, I actually played five years. So yeah. there was just no transfer, you know, no one said, hey, you can't take this extra year. But that ended up with masters and all that for free. So I'll take it. Just a, just a dry county at the time, so less partying, more focused on football, which turned out pretty good. Got it. And then you mentioned NFL. Sounds like you got bounced around quite a bit. There wasn't like a one time, one full year or anything like like that where you were just full time in yeah. the NFL. So, um, so could you tell me about your time in the NFL as well? Sure. So I wasn't drafted. So you know when you're if you're not drafted, you're pretty much just a journeyman. So I was very fortunate. You know, just knowing a lot of process, being in the, knowing a lot about the process and being in the process. There's a lot of great guys out there. Some guys perform when time counts. I was kind of one of those guys, so I always did good at workouts, and I would get signed. I stay for many camps and eventually um, get signed by teams. Um, so most most teams were just a couple of weeks, one to three weeks, to get cut. Um, for the Rams, I literally like I meet a guy out. They like come come to preseason. Um, you know, you're waiting for your first preseason, and then you're like, holy shit, you get signed. And I was like, literally at the bus getting ready to go on the team, and my agent called like as I was getting out the car, and they're like, oh, Stephen Jackson signed early. That was the that was the number one player at the time. Obviously, they need a roster spot. Yeah. Most of the time, people hold out. Hopefully, you get a kicker or a punter that gets a couple of weeks, a couple of game fills. <laughs> so that was my first experience. Uh, experience dejected. Uh, Brutal. At the bus. Um, but the, the next year, a bunch of teams, and I was with the Ravens the longest. I was like six months, but it was heaven. It was awesome. Yeah. And then uh, just to kind of finish that out, um, I already knew something was wrong with my – the injuries, was, things were going, you know, you tell your body to do something, it would just be a little bit late doing it. Um, but, you know, you don't have the body awareness even if you're looking for it um, in your early 20s. So I went up to the CFL, had a bunch of workouts I, I signed, or I was going to sign, failed the physicals. And that was it. That was it. So sounds like after the NFL, you continued coaching in a variety of ways. Is that true? So, yeah, so so it sounds like you went straight into – you continued coaching, I guess, so kicking, and then – Kicking and punting is a weird thing because there, we, our group at the time uh, – still going on today, it's called one-on-one kicking camp. So at the time, you know, this is a unique kicker world. Usually I only talk to a handful of guys about this, so the uh, public gets to hear it. Um, there was – unless you're – at the time in the 90s, unless you're some All-American from Florida or California or had like a YouTube video – uh, of like a 60 yard field goal, we're getting the scholarship. You had to earn it, um, walk on and then earn the scholarship. Right. So we started this company while I was still in college. And so like your coaches were literally like two years older than you. Uh, and now that's just what yeah. it is today. So I was coaching at like 19, 20. And every time I go home, there's always people waiting. And of course, like, so one of one on one kicking did, we basically set up Sunday camps. You meet every other Sunday for two hours. Um, have a ton of time to work with the guys, so usually work on technique. Eventually, for me, it led to like body work and um, kind of doing everything a kind of physical therapist does with the kids. Um, and uh, and yeah, and, and now everybody gets scholarships, so it's like kind of changed the culture of that uh, overnight success. Mm -hmm. Took ten years, <laughs> just, <laughs> just like everything in product and and everything like that. So that's kind of the background of that. Yeah, that makes sense. I had a buddy who was a long snapper, and he. They kind of lived. Long snappers also lived like kind of in their own little world as well. So, oh, yeah. we're, we're, we're on the same team. Camp. On the same, yeah, team. Yeah. Those camps were probably, and yeah, the best, same camps. They're, they're best friends. <laughs> I shouldn't say this on a podcast, but where do you, where do you play? Purdue. Okay, well, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Somebody knows them. You know, it's a very yeah. small, a small world today. Those kids only go to like three camps. And meet each other. Right. Right. Um, all right. Can you tell me where in uh, your life were you when you first thought of the concept of the breath belt? So, like I mentioned before, you know, I was in a lot of chronic pain. So that pain really started around like 2007, 8. And, you know, um, you know, just like you, you're a very happy, positive guy. And, like, I started noticing, you know, I was in, it looked okay in the mirror, but it wasn't functioning. 
if I would change a pair of shoes or if something would happen, I'd literally be crawling for a week. And, you know, same thing, like a chiropractor could fix it short term, but the second you get in the car, it just wouldn't hold. And so, like, just nothing was working. I had no, like, my, my life outcome became based on the, the way I got up in the morning. Is this going to be a shitty day or is this going to be a good day? And it was literally day by day for years, so years. So I was going down the rabbit hole. People were starting to talk about the breath, but just like everything in American um, uh, medicine, everything is segmented. So it's like you got a shoulder problem, see a shoulder specialist. And, you know, it's just kind of like a lot of the, you know, it's, it's all one integrated system. All this, you know, there's 29 systems in the body that all integrated together. But it's like, you got to track, you know, you have a little bit of money. I probably made more money from the injury settlement in the NFL than, um, than actually playing. So it's like, you have a couple thousand bucks, you get an MRI. Now you got to get a closed MRI. Now you, now you go to this specialist, you need an open MRI. You're like, well, there's 5,000 bucks. Like, now I got to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get that money back. Um, so, you know, just grinding away for a long time. Because for me, I even if I wanted, you know, I always had... Uh, always worked, always had um, desk jobs at different times, but like little, like I never had a migraine in my life and like just everything weird stuff would happen. I'd just get migraines at all, all times. So it's like I, I literally was fighting for my life um, in a sense at the time, but it went on for a really long time um, and I just kept digging. So long story short, guys like Donnie Thompson, who we may talk about later, um, Kelly Sturette, these are Donnie played football. And I would always ask him questions about ankle stuff. This is like early 2010s or whatever before we uh, became uh, more like a mentor-mentee relationship later on. But there just wasn't any good information. And I had a really good friend, Jimmy St. Louis, who actually helps me out with the business now. He was He's just one of those incredible athletes. And he uh, turned me on to a guy named Brian McKenzie. That's uh, he's good friends with Kelly Starrett. And he had this thing, uh, Power Speed Endurance, which led to heart breath. And he was like the leading breath coach like at the time. And so digging deep into the breath work, you know, just getting these little tools from all these little different things. And at the time I was, I'd come across the blue firing pattern. You know, we don't have to go down the neuroscience stuff, but there's a thing called the group blue firing pattern. It's just the way your, your hips, glutes, and so as work together um, in a uh, in pattern. You know, there's these muscle firing patterns and people work separating the breath over here and hip stability over here and they're all one time system. But Brian was really one of those guys that kind of like helped me put that stuff together. I remember Kelly Starrett's language helped me really help me help my kids out the language I was helping my kids and of course started doing body work. I had a good friend, uh, Matt Talalo, uh, I think it's at Performance and Wellness Cairo on Instagram. I, he was actually a trainee in our group. We helped him get a scholarship to uh coming uh, at University of Colorado, and years later we were connected in 2013-14, and he was in Cairo school, and he's now my chiropractor. So it's like you know, some of these seeds turned into gigantic plants, you know, years down the road. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. all those relationships to make. So that's kind of like the basis of it. So fast forward, I never I didn't really have the idea. I just I, I toyed with it because like, I, you know, you don't want to be the fucking guy that puts holes in. You know? Right. So, um, right. So, you know, <laughs> for like a year, probably around 2016, I'm like, all right, well, this is a good time in my life to do it. I got to start like learning. And basically, I spent a year and a half, two years trying to make myself not do it because I never invented anything. I definitely didn't do a patent process before or anything like that. So I just like, you know, I just decided to go uh, all in. And like after meeting people, after person after person, going to certification after certification. I wasn't really doing it to help my kids. I was like, what's missing? And there was only one guy, it's called controlled articulation, something, it's called CARS. I think it's Dr. Andrea Spina. And the whole thing, what I was trying to do, because I was deep in classical plies and yoga and all that stuff, let's just say I'm on the ground and do a figure four stretch, so I'm just reaching for my leg. He would take his hand, he'd say, before you reach, Put your fist right here, breathe it into it with your intra-abdominal pressure, then go ahead and touch your foot or something like that. And I was like, mm -hmm. that's it. I was like, one guy after all this, oh, like, you only go interesting. You only go for 10 certifications or whatever, but essentially that's gonna turn on that house. 
internal or external rotators, which is going to help you glue it out, and all of a sudden you set a space joint by joint down to your foot. So that's it. And then, that's it. You know, and hmm. then finally, it, right around that time, I was like, uh, there's a lot of ways it came out, but basically I was, I was testing it out because I was already in planes. I was, um, you know, putting, I flew a lot, so I put softballs in my belt and then, you know, they'd pop out on the ground and stuff like that. But it's like whenever I put those softballs in there and push out for the last 10 minutes of the flight and just breathe, I'd get off the plane, I'd be like back in extension short term. I'd be like, oh God, I actually feel good for it because it's an active tool. So like these little things started coming yeah. together and basically I was like, there's a thing called it. I don't have it on me. I do have the original breath belt on me, though, which I can show you. I was like, I need a mobile SI joint belt with pockets. That's it. It's, it, you know, it took a long time to get there, but when it was time, I was like, it's time. Let's do it. Got it. So, where specifically was most of your pain, and do you have any of it anymore? Low back, low back, and hip pain for the most part. Uh, I mean, like the second. I, I already knew what, what would happen because I would just do like weight belts and put bubbles inside. So I knew the function was going to do it, but it was all low back and hip pain. And it's all about managing chronic pain. It's on the medical side, sports performance. Like we need a reset. Everybody needs a reset. And I was like, I need something at the very least that I can do something. And within like seconds, I can find my baseline. So I'm sure you've had some injuries before, Jake. And, um, you know, whether you can't sleep or whatever, and you got kids. So it's like, People just need to be like, I need a tool that can just put me in the present, get me back to where it was yesterday. Because if you keep going one step forward, two steps back, you're not going in the right direction. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So can you dumb it down a little bit and maybe just explain why the average person would need something like the breath belt? Absolutely. So I'm actually going to show you the first of got some balls here. I'm actually going to show you the first breath belt um, we got off the line uh, after some prototypes. So the first 3,000 were actually sold with no logo. No logo, no logo. So uh, just a quick story of this, of course, I'll answer your question. People, like, you know, I didn't know how to place it. I didn't know anything. And I think the first one I sold for $39.99. And most of my uh, clients were kickers and punters. People were actually paying $190 because I was trying to set the value, and, you know, not, not 100 a day or, right. or something like that. But people were paying $190 for this thing. And at the time, I was like, okay, $135 uh, with a discount, put a logo on the front for the first like uh, 6000 or the next 6000 And then I finally put the logo on the back, made some improvements, made it from $159.95. So, okay, so here we go. So the simplest way to explain the breath belt it's a belt with balls that's it it is the fastest way to optimize diaphragmatic breathing that's the same thing as glute function because people don't understand there's a muscle in your body called the psoas it connects the top of your hip to the, your t12 uh, which is your diaphragm it's quite it's connected so it's the same thing you can't if you do body work like if i lay if, if you're on your back i'm doing some belly work I can't touch that muscle because your guts are in the You have to turn on the abs to unrestrict what's underneath it. And of, of course, you know, it makes uh, pretty good sense. If something's the deepest muscle in your body, it's probably pretty important, right? So it's not going to just let you touch it. You know, <laughs> yeah. you got you to go yeah. around it to let it function better. Of course, you know, put it in the hands as a catalyst for a strength coach or therapist to, to get it moving, yep. a activate, integrate, all that stuff. So, the belt is super simple. The problem is, and I'll fix this, you know, with future marketing that we're going to have. It looks like a waist trainer. It looks like a soft belt. Yeah. And the magic is what's inside. So what the patent is for is these internal distractions. Things. And there's passive pocket back here. So it's passive in the back, active in the front. So the belt alone, the belt alone will get on everything because you're, it's kind of like a, it's pushing in. And if you flex, you're turning on your core, your transverse abdominis, but you can't breathe. So it's kind of like uh, with the balls in there, it's kind of like having a five or seven year old stand on you while you're standing up. And if you can cue that resistance, and the way I do it is, so let me just show you. 
you know, it's real simple. You know, you got these two cellular muscles, they run all the way up to your T12, and you just track the cell. So you're always starting with two balls low, you work your way up. If you want to open up your hip and put them in the side, everybody's tied up here, everybody's tied up here. So it's very simple. You just put the balls in, and it's kind of like an active release technique for the abs. Um, so yeah, these two pockets will line up right in front, strap it on tight, and that's it. So the only cue is, this is literally how simple it is. So Jake, go ahead, lift up a, let's open that shirt. <laughs> so let, let your belly go. And just, when you, when you let your belly go, fat guy belly, you should be able to take your hands and just hook your ribs. So I always tell people to hook them. Now go ahead and flex. <clears throat> there you go. So it kicks you out, right? Right. Perfect. So, but you can't breathe. So do the same thing. So back on belly, hook them. And now with your intra-abdominal pressure, you're just resisting just enough, not 90%, 10% until it kicks you out. That's your starting point. So it's kind of like an isometric for the, the core. So whether you're inhaling or exhaling, you're always resisting it. But that push-pull is turning on your abs, it's forcing that liquid intra-abdominal pressure lower, which opens up your SI joints, makes your glutes work better, all that fun stuff. So it's properly cued, resisting the entire time, whether you're breathing up, up and down, not, not a, you know, people bastardize that word, bracing for a long time. It really isn't a good word because, you know, everybody uses it, um, but it just forces your abs from turning off. When they're on, you're just constantly breathing because, uh, Little things like if you're sprinting down the field and you flex, are you going to be faster or slower? Are you going to be slower? If you're throwing a ball and you hold your breath and you try to throw it as hard as you can, it's going to be 5% slower. So everything in your body is supposed to be flex reflexive. All the muscles are supposed to turn on and off really fast. But when we got the compression anywhere in our spine, it's going to affect the speed of those muscles turning on and off, which is this slow down. <clears throat> but gotcha. Squat, you know, squat, bench, deadlift, hip inch tool, which is very nice. Got it. Cool. All right, let's go back to the story of the actual breath belt and you trying to get it out to the market. Yep. So can you tell me how long it took to, or maybe, maybe just the story of what, what it took to get the first hundred sales of the breath belt? So that happened very fast in about a week. So okay. I, like I said, I had, I had, I, I, not cheating, but I had a built-in audience. But I had, I had coached thousands of kickers over over the years. And technically, the short background story is when you get into the kicking and punting, you're forced to kick off the ground from an early age. But most kids aren't. You know, your hip flexors don't mature until you're 20, but you need a scholarship offer by the time you're like 17, 18. So these yep. kids are kick, kick, even though they can do it, their body's compensating around a shitty uh, hip position, but so, so many kids are getting avulsions, they're getting hip surgery, mm. literally at yeah. 17. It's just a, it's a very small group of people with kickers and punters, so not a lot of people know about it. But so forcefully, the younger you can fix these issues because the tissues are so healthy, you know, the issues can kind of fix themselves. You know, just like anything in sports development, you're just trying to get it to a young kid so they can get a faster result. So all of these all, all American, you know, guys at Alabama and Clemson and Miami and all these guys, they're all fucking injured. All of them. <laughs> like, basically. And so, uh, and they all have injuries, but kind of the reason why I made it is because at the time, like, uh, physical therapists, they don't know how to train. Like, so, it's such a small community. So people, few people even know what he looks like they don't know what it happens to your body when it you, you right. go off the ground rather than tea. It's just way harder. Um, so it's almost like bad coaching proof and bad physical therapy proof. So I made it for guys to work under their shirt and me so they could just watch film. No one knows what we're wearing it on, but meanwhile, they're just working on their breath, but at the same time, they're working on their group function by default. So, you know, if you can explain, if, uh, you can teach a 15 year old boy who are idiots just like me and you were too bright at <laughs> 15. If you can teach them to do something and it just does it, it's like you got something special because, you know, and, and especially if a 15 year old can teach another 15 year old how to do it, it's like you got something because it's simple, you know. Uh huh. Yeah. 
So yeah, it was. I made it as an intro tool for kickers and punters, but really fast. It, it just took on my habit. So of course, I, I was really beating the drum. It's not like I sat. I lived on a plane. I went because to me, it's very. I wasn't going to do it unless I got it in sports performance. And so it was very important to me to actually have a product that's used by like universities, pro teams, because that's what I was. I'm like, I'm yeah. just going to do some like. Amazon stuff that no one cares about. With no education, it's not. It's just going to fizzle up, fizzle out. Unfortunately, well, Tommy Thompson and David Beck and Pete Holman, which you had on the podcast, you know, those guys show that you can change the culture. Just it's, it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> And you and you started with a very 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 specific niche, which wasn't even just football players. It was kickers who were football yeah. players. So, exactly. so yeah, that's that's important too. All right. Well, um, you know, I've I've talked to you about, and you kind of said that on the podcast that that it's it's grown. Um, it's it's still selling today. I think you're still like, it's still in its infancy, I'm guessing in your mind, but it's, it's taken off. You've sold many thousands. Yeah, um, sold this is close to, close to probably 22 or 23,000. Of course you give a lot of free ones away. Um, so probably 25, 26,000 belts on the head. So. Right. So yeah, still like, you know, it's still only really a few years old, but it's, it's been successful. Now let's talk about your second product, oh, yeah. which is the landmine grip. Yes. So can you can you tell the birth story of the landmine grip? Absolutely. I love this story because I love what it, the mission that stands behind it. So uh, long story short, one of the guys that helped me with the breath belt early on uh, is David Weck. David Weck is in San Diego, and he uh, created the Bosu Ball and a lot of uh, next level products in the last couple of years. Um, at the time, I was going back and forth, and I had seen this really big guy, and, and I never really met him. You know, he was either doing content or something like that. So it turned out to be a superhero, Alex Canales. So during the pandemic, Alex started working at the gym I work uh, that, that's like the headquarters. It's called Pacific Beach Training. It's a beautiful gym, Pacific Beach, owned by a uh, good friend, Junior Lioso. Um, and that's kind of where I, I, I would use as the headquarters, and we'd ship from and all that. And so, like, for years, I'd. Um, uh, for three years, I'd spent seven, ten days in San Diego every month just doing breath belt. So Alex started working at the gym, and he was, you know, Alex, it's not like he started from scratch. This guy was a beast. He was a state, heavyweight state champ um, wrestler from Iowa City. The next door to Stan Gable, this incredible Iowa strength coach, he had a, he was a defensive line scholarship at Iowa always has the best defense. Their, their yeah. games, the score of the games are like, always like 10 to 9. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big 10 guy, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and, who's, your, who's, your, who's your team? Uh, I'm a Purdue fan, but yeah. I, so I played small D3 football. No, I know. I know. That's why I yeah. love talking to the football players. And yeah. you'll, you'll see this recurring pattern in being better as I talk to a lot of more athletes because I want to like – figure it the fuck out, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh, go on. Yeah. Sorry. So, no problem. So I finally got a chance to meet Alex and he kind of told me a story that, you know, you, you, you take one look at him moving when he's working out and it's like, this guy's strong as shit, but he's yeah. explosive, but, mm -hmm. he, but he moves like a cat. He looks like, he, he like moves like Von Miller. So, so I, I saw him doing this stuff with the landline and, um, I, he was, David Wack has a lot of coiling core concepts and what Alex was doing, like, first of all, it was like the most fun I ever had learning like a new system and it's electric. And fortunately, you know, you always want to problem for me, I, I wanted to start in sports performance, have a good general pop, but having access to Junior's gym, I'm um, so thankful for that because he had nine year olds, he had 95 year olds. He's in wheelchairs, he had high school athletes, he had pro athletes come and go, world class jujitsu. There was a little bit of everybody. And you're like, oh, everybody can do this landline stuff. It's just never been um, you know, popularized. And of course, that's, I'm pretty sure the background of it, um, Bert's Pop Soren created the landline, as far as I know, for Bert Soren, uh, as he was preparing to throw a hammer in the uh, mm. uh, US Olympic trials, I think, in uh, 1999. So uh, so, to this day, you always see people like they're just standing stack and they're like, dit, 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 dit. and everything based on the landmine is 
what Alex calls landmark. So it's based, basically elbow to ASIS, the pointy part of your hip. But everything has a long side and a short side. And you hope, unlike Olympic lifting, which is fun to shit, it's not, you know, there's some lip, uh, transition in uh, football for sure. But the forward and 10 aspect, you're like, oh, that's girls, that's guys, that's field hockey, that's every sport other than Olympic lifting, which is an up and down sport. <laughs> so, yeah. you need forward, you need forward. Yeah. And, and so, so. As he was doing these educations, it was just electric. And if you just look at Landmine University um, Instagram page, it's just like you're walking into an 80s rock concert every day. When you leave, you're electric. Like he's west sided it up. There's so many different. It's not just the landmine, it's the concepts. But as, you know, at this time when I met him, it was already three years in, I think, um, two and a half, three years in. And you saw products like uh, the So Right, which, uh, uh, I love talking about Mac. I to introduce you. He's the man. Um, but people were listening about the SOAS. They were listening about that. And, of course, like, you know, the New York Toes Revolution, like, I never met Ben uh, other than some DMs mm-hmm. in, like, 2016, 17. But it's like you see some of these companies take off. And not every, you know, it's great if somebody makes a gajillion dollars. But to, I guess selfishly for me, I want to change the problem. I want to change the mission, like to literally change the culture. And Alan, like, that is something that's going to change the culture. So that's the background before it. And so I was like, I got to help this guy with the product because David Weck is, you know, he most of the greatest royalty of all time. So, <laughs> yeah. Like, but at the same time, you're learning about these education systems and all these ones that I had gone to through 2008, 9, all the way to 2017. And it, it's almost like it doesn't have to be matched with the product, but anybody can steal your shit. So I'm like, if there was a product that could match, and obviously like the breath belt is a perfect tool for there and partner with that. Um, but very quick in the early search, people are slipping on the bar. Gym owners don't like chalk. So I was like, that's it. So I came up with the idea and, you know, just like any product, you're like, is this a good idea? And then within the first day, because there was no prototypes, I was like, I can't believe there's no grips. I'm like, oh yeah, I've been pushing sleds feel like my wrist has been breaking for my whole life. Of course there's no problems. So I bought I had bought a torque tank for the gym a while back. And the first prototype is there's like these hard, uh, I think the barbell is 1.96 diameter. And um, so it's like a hard plastic thing. It's like four or five inches. And you kind of got to take that little screw and go like that when you're, like you're doing Ikea or something like that. And you take it off and it fits right on. The problem is it's not compressive. So it might as well be steel because there's no kickback. You know what I mean? You need compression of these kind of like a, if, I'm, if I'm grabbing your bicep, like it's got some give to it. And it's, it's about those little muscles turning on and off, feeding back to your shoulder and hips and all that fun stuff. So I was like, holy shit. If I got off the torque tank and there's nothing on sleds, the sleds are a little bit uh, smaller, which I can tell you about. I'm like, that's the solution right there. Cause I did some research and quick numbers from tactical and, uh, you know, sports performance partners are already have. There's probably three million sleds sitting around in America with two poles. So, sure, you got this landmine thing that's going to be, you know, it's starting fast, but hasn't picked up on all the personal training groups. And I want to help Alex, Alex's system not get bastardized and like literally change the culture. And with Instagram and all that stuff, you can actually do it. You can kind of protect it because, at least in America, there's been some knockoffs of the the breath belt, but you know, the hope is with podcasts or, you know, there's probably 3000 high performance coaches, um, for college Olympic and pro, and then they all kind of hold themselves accountable. So, you know, I know in the steel world, people are likely to knock off or make a little change, but no one's copied the breath belt. And I think it's the same way like that. I just wanted to help Alex, um, solve the problem. So I don't, I had, uh, what is it? Just that. Oh, there's so Jake, I, I had as kind of a good sign because I had my first one you know, we're already to market last Friday, I think. Um, and I had my landmine grip. I took it to an NSCA conference and somebody stole it, uh, not from the NCA, but in the beginning with the breath belt, people started stealing them all the time and from customers, what? not just me, but from customers. So of course your first product, you're like, 
oh my God. Oh, what do I do? Do I send this guy out? I don't have any money. Should I send this guy another free one? But then I was like, oh, this is good because like just talking to strength coaches, they just have this blank stare at their face. They're like, yeah, I've been programming teenage girls to go as fast as they can holding on to these steel bars and it's like rips your hands apart. And it's like the second you use these, you can't go back because you literally, you feel all these muscles turn on and then you go back to the pole and you're like, you feel like you're just shoving your fist into a brick wall. And so, uh, so this right here, um, uh, this is the bottom half of Barbell Pump. And this is where, like, I met Dylan, happy to tell that story at that, that um, but they did the barbell bomb first, you know, the uh, great product that looks like kind of the tennis ball. And right. Got yeah. The squats and everything like that. But they got the, they did this to, to see if you get the durometer and even up close, you can see like the squishiness of it, you know? So, and that's what no one has. They have that like, you know, kind of like a dip bar or whatever. It's that hard styrofoam and you, even there's no kickback. So there's literally no solution like this in the world. And so the lamp, you know, I have a number of great products coming up and I have a great partnership with that bad and pump like everything. Dylan and Austin are yeah. awesome. Um, and I'm just so happy to have a product that everybody needs and there's literally no other solution. Very cool. Uh, I, I, I'd be curious to hear, you know, I'm not sure if you saw garage gym experiment did like an Instagram post of, yo, look, check, check the, check out the landmine grip. What do you think? Yeah. And most people are like, no, don't need it. I'm curious to hear what your uh, thoughts on that uh, is. Oh, and like, is that what you saw with the breath belt as well? Exactly. So uh, I, I'm just glad you did that because uh, I love seeing the feedback, of course, of the breath belt. Like, even to this day, man, not to get too, too off track, but like, it's freaking crazy to me that I, like, I had to beat the drum for the breath belt because it's just different. People are just so hard. Yeah. And, um, to play, and, you know, you came from football world. So what is the high school football world? You got some donor that gives a bunch of 10 millimeter leather belts and you got to wait two decades till, till it actually like fits your body. It's a little, you, know, you throw them in a dirty pond, come pick it up a week later. And it's like, there's just nothing like it. And of course you got to back it up with education and all this stuff. So like, I'm like, it's a coach's pair of hands. What else is there? You want to fix everybody's breathing problem? Can't put, you know, a, a 30 year old coach can't, you know, touch a girl yeah. happen in, in high school, but now you can have 30 girls, you got 60 pair of hands, no touch barrier, and everybody's getting the glute result that you want for the hip hinge. So, um, so yeah, so I would take stuff personally in the beginning, but real quick, I was like, oh, it's just like they don't know. So when you put up the post, it's interesting to see what different people do. Um, and even some athletes reached out, out on there, there's like, this is pointless. but. The reason why it's going this is because they never felt it. Because right. Never been a yeah. before. I've only felt it like six times, <laughs> but it's, a, it's immediate. But you can't go back. Kind of like the breath belt. Like, you can't go, you know, unless you're a power lifter, you know, with, you got four inch standards or whatever. You know, the breath belt's a training tool for 99% of the time on the end competition day. So, uh, but until you've done a squat and you've never had bubbles to push out, like, what else is there? And so the same thing, the second you push, you know, the second you push the sled um, with this, you feel the, like, I would argue, I, I don't really have to argue it, I just know it. I know these muscle firing patterns are effed up in 99% of people, unless they're, you know, great athletes, and that's what they do for a living. They already have that problem, so they're gonna have weak feet. Now, you got, now you're pushing the steel bar. Your entire body is compensating around shitty wrist position. Mm. The second you have compression, because these outs, you know, just, Jake just, you know, look at your hands. Where, where's the uh, things? The calluses are on the outside three fingers. Everything yeah. The outside. Every, yeah, it's true. And of course, your thumb and right. finger connection won't work because basically, even though your hands are, mm. bit, you know, Instagram pics, you know, don't tell the story. You're just pushing the compression in there, and you see, you know, the muscles that are nerve Your whole form just turn off when you go back to the to the uh, steel handles. So. It's just great feedback. So one, one interesting, yeah. But, but um, but the cool thing, and you know, I kind of did this with the breath belt. Uh, let's say somebody, a guy or a girl in high school, can't plank for ten seconds. Right? They put the belt on, so they have something to push against. 
they just march three times, then go back. And I don't always do. I said, do the same thing. Just constantly push against it and breathe through your nose. And you'll get somebody. You'll get some. You know, fifteen year old girl. She can't plank for ten seconds. She'll plank for a minute and a half. She'll be laughing, telling you a story, mm. asking you why she's able to do it, and just because you know she's got more, she's getting less compression in her spine, leads her to their job better, not perfect, just better. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, same thing like this. It's so self-explanatory, but it's like you kind of gotta feel it. It just you know. This, Interesting. I, I won't have to beat the drum like into the butt belt. This will probably be like a three or six month thing. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, there are, I mean, there's so many examples like that. Like I think of when I first, before I even touched a specialty barbell, you know, yeah. I was like, why? And I see comments like that still all the time. Like, yeah. why would you need a, a, a safety squat bar until yeah. you use it and you like yeah. feel less stress on your, right. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, yeah, it's kind of that. I remember, you know, uh, Kabuki Strikes was one of my first partners, and uh, I was already kind of in love with their story, so I was fortunate to, to partner with those guys. But it's just like I, I bought a cattle, Cadillac bar for uh, Pacific Beach training in San, in San Diego. The second you just carry it, <laughs> you put it, you're, you know, you're on the bench, you're just holding it, you're like, oh my God, this is what my shoulder should feel like. And to me, that's what the, like, every, everybody that puts the breath belt on and puts some kind of mm -hmm. distraction or resist. They're like, oh my God, this is, this is how, at least short term, my hip should move. Once you do that, plus the Kabuki bar, and you're just like, you know, it, it's, yeah. it just completely changes everything. Okay, and then uh, a, a few more questions. Uh, so it seems like you've really reached out to a lot of people along this inventor's journey, I guess you could call it. And it, it really seems like there's been a lot of people that have helped you out. Um, would you say that a lot of the inventors in this space are here for each other, or um, is that not the case? Well, first of all, I want to say because of your show, you know, I used to have to seek people out uh, because I, I couldn't get a group together. But you know, I, I, I thank you off, you know, off air as well because just seeing those roundtables and the fact that all those guys know each other, it's fucking awesome and like you know i've seen down guys like i've been up to uh cj's campbell at surplus track we've been talking since i first heard him on years um so like just the fact that there is some somewhat of a community um okay so before that you know if, if i do anything you know you don't go to the nfl you know on a whim like it's a it's it's a you know uh, you go blindly to the to this invisible thing and you just make it happen. <laughs> and it's not an overnight process. It's going to take years, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, you want it to happen faster than, than anything else. But, um, you know, a quick rerun, rewind, you know, I was in you know, pain for a long time. And it was like taking over my life. My life was scheduled around staying out of chronic pain, not really moving forward. It's like just trying to find a baseline. So I always wanted to have kids, you know, since then I have two kids. But... I waited to have kids until later on in, in my thirties. I didn't have the scheduled date. I just knew I couldn't be in chronic pain because I couldn't be the person I wanted to be. So when I was thinking about uh, bringing the breath belt to market, I knew like if I'm going to go all in, and that's why I was trying to like uh, convince myself not to do it. But it just kept pulling me in. I'm like, it's not just about you know what materials the breath belt's going to be made of. It's okay. How do these guys' lives work? Because I wasn't, I wasn't. Um, you know, married I was, uh, with the same girl I've been with um, ten, for 10 years. And I'm like, how does this affect the relationship? How much travel is there? Yeah. What are the ups and yeah. downs? Of course, the funding. How are you going to find money? Because there's always going to be a next level. So I seeked out an match for a long time. I hopped on a plane. I can't go back traveling. But um, I hopped on a plane and literally, like, just bothered the shit out of these guys and you know, actually became friends with them. <laughs> um, but that's what, you know, I wanted advice from a girl, you know, grown men and women, because I know some girls too um, uh, have inventions in different fields, not, uh, not uh, uh, fitness, um, but just really like to see, you know, what it's all about, what's the lifestyle, you know, because that's really what I was going after, sure, if it was yeah. for profit, that's great, um, but, you know, how do I not destroy my life and everybody around me, <laughs> trying to do my life, you know? Yeah. So, so the answer. So that's my unique experience, and I had a I had a route in my head 
it wasn't perfect, but I, I, I knew it wasn't just about like competing with other people. Um, I guess the only way I can explain it is, uh, you know, belt, belts were around for a long time. No one put any innovation in belts. And so I didn't want to like attack, you know, the, the standard, you know, I, I didn't know anything about powerlifting until, you know, I got into the community a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. But I want to attack, this, you know, I was like, for business, there's no Mr. Leather Belt. There's some big companies, but like, no one, you know, Leather Belt's been around for hundreds of years. So it's like, okay, I can kind of attack this invisible person, kind of like, kind of like, <laughs> like, yeah, like, you know, there's some great child companies, like I've heard of on the podcast mm-hmm. as well, but uh, not. You know, destroying them. There's always, you know, there's always a need for for chalk in, in lots of different spaces. But there's no Mister Chalk. There's no one guy sitting on top of you know the chalk. <laughs> you know? Right. So right. I can go out. Go, so I can go after these invisible things. Like, you know, who's gonna, who on earth could tell you that this is better than this? If you drag a barbell through the woods with both hands and you have grip on one and you don't on the other, like. Which one is going to last longer? So everything mm-hmm. is supposed to, and for me, I'm based in sports performance. So everybody's athletes, if you get the highest level people to see the benefit because you're at, technically it's heavier, but you're stronger with it. It's like, uh-huh. so that's it. And it's immediate because it actually gets more muscles. So, yeah. Cool. So, uh, would you mind just telling me who some of the other inventors within the space that you do respect are? Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, like I said, like I, I went around and I got a lot of great educate, you know, some of the great education people like John Wolf and on it, um, uh, Dr. Andreas Bina and uh, that's the cars guy, um, Kelly Sturette, you know, Donnie Thompson, before the product, Donnie Thompson um, was a guy like, he will, you know, we'd reach out once or twice a year for years, but him and Kelly Sturette were putting out YouTube videos in the late 2000s and that language really kind of led where it is today. On the product side, when I finally decided, I'm like, it's go time, when I found the manufacturer and I got the first product to prototype, I sent out like 20 handwritten and, and emails to like people I respected. And four got back to me. David Reck, close to Paul, Tommy Thompson, who I had a previous relationship with a little bit. Um, and there's a guy, Pete Holman, who uh, you know, I think just had him on the podcast. And, um, you know, I, I like going to Colorado and it's perfect. I'm like, uh, this guy. <laughs> um, because yeah. Because Pete, Pete, and Pete did it. Like now he was a world class athlete. Multiple products and multiple educations around the world. So they're so you know for me, even though I'm in sports performance, I want the breath belt in big box. I want to upsold it CrossFit gym memberships. I want it as a physical. Yeah. Tool. It's a lot. It's a lot to go. Like just talk. It can be ten hours talking about the medical side. So. And then there's another guy, his name's Cal Deeds. Cal Deeds is a world, uh, world-class strength coach at the University of Minnesota. He's, uh, he's the Olympic coach for, or strength coach for the female hockey team, but just like, you know, he does tactical and everything. And he was the only person I heard talk about the new final in 2017 on Marvel Shrug Podcast. And in that email, I'm like, holy shit, man, this, is, this has come out before, but it's never been sexy. No one's even mentioned it. Yeah. And it's like, so uh, I flew up and saw him like the next day. And uh, uh, Cal, uh, anybody who's serious about sports performance, just look up Reflexive Performance Reset, which uh, the only one tool that they use for that. The triphasic training has been around for, you know, 15 years, 20 years. And it's just like, half, I think half the NHL is a version of triphasic training. Awesome. Yeah. And then lastly, just what is, uh, you mentioned you have a few other products in the works. Yeah. What's next for you that you can share? Um, I can't like, uh, uh, I can't say like the names of the products, but I am partners with Admat and I, I will be continuing the grip, uh, grip projects. Um, I came up with a lot of these grip ideas, uh, same, same time as the, uh, the uh, landmine grip. So like for the SEO landmines. Okay. Proud so I like back then, before, I think before I talked to, to Dylan, I already met the manufacturers. Um, I'll, I'm sure I'll, uh, I'll send you those 3D images so we can use for the podcast, uh, just so you can, the people can see kind of what they are. I originally wanted to call them Thunder Caps with a K for Alex Canellis. Um, and you'll see the designs are pretty cool. But um, yeah, I'm gonna be, uh, I hope to be covering steel stock handles for a long time. Um, as of the breath belt, that'll always be the, everything I ever do because 
at the at the quite literally to the core. I don't want to say that no pun intended joke, um, <laughs> but every you. If, if I give you a high five right now and I push in your hand, eventually you're going to have enough pressure where you're going to have to stabilize through the core. So, you know, you're stabling from the top down, ground up, from the side, and you can see all that fun stuff. So that blue firing pattern, if you fix that thing, you're, you're optimizing diaphragmatic breathing patterns, the same thing. So that's always going to be at, like the core issue. For the breath belt, finally, after crazy funding stuff and everything. Um, I've always wanted to have a lower price point um, and kind of, cause I want my, my big goals for the uh, breath belt. I want to kill the waist trainer. I want to kill the, the breath belt. Sorry, the breath belt. I don't want to kill my own product. <laughs> kill the breath belt, uh, waist yeah. trainer and back brace. And back. those are no easy tasks because it's new. It's, just, it's, it's a breath belt. That's what it is. I've always wanted it to be, you know, hopefully in 10 years, People would be like, oh, there's, is that a weight belt or a breath belt? Like, that would be pretty, pretty mm. cool. And it's like, you know, nothing's ever the way you want, but it's like, it's, it's already, and I, I want to change the culture just like the way uh, Alex's education system. Those simple and highly effective training ones can just be a catalyst for any program, right? anything. So I want breath belts in every, on every high school rack in, in America, among other things. So I'll have a smaller version. That little, like, it's going to go after, you know, waist trainers, girls, butts, and all that fun stuff, but I'm literally going to solve the problem. So I'm going to have the waist trainer that'll be triathletes, you know, um, uh, that'll be four, this one's six and a half inches uh, vertical. Um, the next one will be four inches, so that, that'll serve some power lifters as well. And then I'm having an XL version, finally. Um, it's just really tough because once you get around, everybody's body type is different. I have some guys in the NFL that are 42, and Perfect. And I have another guy, you know, some guys with 30, 38, whatever it's stuck in their hands, more mass on the side. It folds over. So, like, I don't just want to, just like everything else I'm doing, I don't want to fuck with the integrity of the product. I don't want it rolling down. It's just really tough to get. So, it's right around, it'll be right around eight inches, but I don't want it rolling over on the side because I don't want somebody to just use the belt because, you know, it's, uh, it's for bigger people. I want to have the same exact use that it has for me, you, and, and anybody else. So, yeah, so no, I, I have no other good products of the focus for now and just uh, getting the smaller and bigger version because ultimately I want to upsell that um, uh, as part of the membership and OT gyms and eventually two bucks. Awesome. Well, good luck doing that. Before we go, would you mind just giving the listeners the best way for people to follow you? Absolutely. So uh, uh, the website is thebreathbell.com, Instagram. Breath belt, and uh, I, I actually, if anybody wants to go down the rabbit hole, because it's my little kicking account, it's I just started landmine sled grips. It's not going to be as uh, as uh, taking people down the science rabbit hole, uh, but just click landmine sled grips. That's where I'm going to be releasing all the products coming up. Most most of them from Advent, hopefully, in the in the upcoming months. But I think right now I got around six or seven products that that I know will catch from day one. And they're, they, they have, they're not just going to be used. They have to be used. They have no choice but to be used because it's going to solve, solve these problems. So, uh, yeah, landmine sled groups, at landmine sled groups, and at the breath belt is the best way to get me. Awesome. Um, I have done all the customer service for those 23, 26,000 um, breath belt owners. So, appreciate it. Okay. You know, great guys like Adam Rush in Lab. I think it was the first product he had on his site. Um, so many people got it through him, so I'm just really appreciative for, for guys like uh, you and Adam. Awesome. Well, glad to hear it. Um, thanks again for hopping on. Uh, looking forward to seeing how the release of these grips go, and yeah, that's going to do it. Awesome, Jake. Good man.